gentlemen, boys, and girls, bite size time is here. That's right, we're talking about a segment of Cat's Eye on Kill by Kill. Well, greetings and salutations, internet. It's your old pal, Patrick coming to you once again from Wilmington, North Carolina? Yeah, sure, why not? This is the Kill by Kill podcast where we're dedicated to celebrating the least discussed component of any horror film, the characters. And we're going to unpack just one segment of 1985's Cat's Eye, the general segment with Drew Barrymore, in the hopes that a young troll's untimely end is just the beginning of the jokes we might make at his expense. And as always, there's only one person I trust that uh, if I get put in the local shelter, uh, she'll make sure I have more than 24 hours to live once I'm on the inside. The one, the only, Gina Radcliffe. How are you doing today, Gina? I've got my teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny little sword. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah. Is it wavy like his sword? That's a very, like, does he go to a special store to get something like that? I'm, I mean, he is dressed like a jester. So so I, I, I guess this is all like, you know, part of part of an aesthetic that's the other question i have about this particular troll because the the scheme here for this troll is i find my way inside of a domestic domicile that has a child i wait until the night i open up a portal through a wall i come out and i steal that child's breath but this guy is like fucking around for 10 minutes before he does it with bells on his hat i'm just saying (laughs) If your job is partially to snake around, why have bells on your hat? Well, he, he, he's got the bells. He kind of makes this noise that reminds me of um, a baby animal from, from Muppet Babies. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. He's really announcing his arrival. Truly. He is not stealthy. Let's put it that way. Um, he just... Uh, my uh, two questions. One... Um, how has he not been murdered before? Because if you're this fucking noisy, <laughs> you should have died like a dozen times over. Yeah, I mean, this can't be the first time he has encountered a home that that has an, an animal in it. Right. Yeah. This they can't be his first fucking rodeo. Like he just got released from troll prison and he's like, I know what I'm doing. And they're like, Don't go in a house with a, a house with a cat. And it's like, I'm, not, I'm fine. Uh, he just like he's been doing this for God knows how long. And just now has been noisy enough to attract a cat. <laughs> Secondly, is Frank Welker the voice of this troll? Because it sure as fuck sounds like it. You know, I I wondered that. That this definitely sounds like 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 he's doing some Welkeries. Yeah. Like I say, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little baby animal. It's a little gremlins. Yeah, it's a lot gremlins. Um, that's what made me think Welker. It just got. It just has that. Welker-esque tone to it. Um, but things have been so tight around here that I didn't get to do that specific research. I didn't get to Google that one note. Uh, so maybe along the way I'll find out. But um, when was the first time you actually watched Cat's Eye? I saw this in the theater. Oh. <laughs> Again, man, your parents were really interesting cats. Let's oh, I mean, way. I was like 12 or 13. This is, yeah. this is, this is you know, not all that. I mean, you know, the first one, Quitters Incorporated, is is intense, mm-hmm. but it was more on a thriller level than, than, right. a, than, a, than a horror movie. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if this is, you know, on you know, unsuitable for a child to watch. You know, certainly a child of like 12 to 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know that it's unsuitable. It just, rem- look, when you said I in the theater, it just reminded me how fast and loose your parents got. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Whereas mine were so yeah. fucking protective. And yet they did take us to see Poltergeist. So, Oh my God. Now see that one, I had that one. I didn't yeah. see until Cable. Right. And this was the reverse for me. I did not see this until it became such an HBO staple that you literally could not blink your eyes without seeing this just one of the guys and Beastmaster. <laughs> Saw them all many, many times. Yes. Um, and we kind of debated which one to do. I don't know that General is the best segment of this, but I'm also unsure as to what the best quote-unquote segment is because 
when I reached out to you about it, I thought for sure we would do the ledge, which I uh, I think is the best one. And your response to I don't know. Quitters has its own issues. The ledge, boring. <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> guess guess we're two opinions on that one. I I just don't know if it would be a it, it, we could get a lot out of it for an entire. That's episode. true. It, it, it's a it's a vibe piece, right? Like, yeah. It works watching it, talking about it. The details aren't quite there. Whereas at least here, you know, we can focus in on each of the terrible dolls that they've given this child and Candy Clark's hair. You know, there's I, I could probably do half an hour on Candy Clark's and, hair. And Candy Clark's psychotic hatred of cats. Oh, my God. She has made a choice. And that is she stands for two things. <laughs> Only one pet should be allowed in your room and cats are death. Yeah, she's just like she she she's you know, she comes from the old country with her fear right. of cats. Yeah. And and that they're gonna steal your breath. Steal your breath. Now I this the this movie was the first time I had ever heard about that. My my parents had zero superstitions beyond their religion, which is filled with them, but uh, didn't have a lot of like, oh my God, you can't do this, or you know, X will equal Y if you somehow do this. I, I guess the thing that came that comes closest, and I've said it on the, the show before, is my mom did not want me to sleep downstairs in the den and watch uh, my recordings of David Letterman <laughs> because because she simply didn't want me to, and and thought, well, the way I get him to stop doing it is tell him that the Night Stalker will probably kill him in the middle of the night. <laughs> Richard Ramirez was <laughs> going to target me. It's like you personally. Yeah. Like, like oh. he'll just be like driving around, oh, hey, Patrick's up. Uh, wait a second. Is he watching? Did he record an entire week's worth of Late Night with David Letterman? He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's a child that needs a stabbing. Probably. Honestly, maybe my mom had it right. And it was just Richard couldn't pull it fucking together to come zipping through Glendale, even though we were, you know, relatively close to a couple different uh, freeway entrances, which is, of course, how my mother made the uh, serial killer math that I was probably vulnerable. Whereas they were fine because Richard Ramirez can't climb stairs. I don't know. <laughs> Again, no one knew it was Richard Ramirez, but we do now, so I might as well call him out. He would just get so exhausted from, from murdering you that, uh, you know, forget it. You know what? I got one, and I've got this videotape of all the David Lettermans this week. Uh, like, hey, everything's coming stupid, up roses. Did he do stupid pet tricks? All right. <laughs> man, are they throwing stuff off a building tonight? Ooh, it's, it's in slow-mo, too. Oh, oh we, got a, we got a Larry Bud Nolan episode. <laughs> They've sent him to the bus terminal. I love it when they send him to the bus terminal. Again, if you need to adjust your walker, let us know because we will press the buzzer to bring a person in to help you in your old folks' home listening to this episode. We are we are cl like we that. are we are clutching our, our life alert necklaces <laughs> talking about this talking about these things. Um yeah, so I saw it on HBO and um you know I had read Quitters and The Ledge in whatever books they had. They were in, I think they were in Night Shift. Night Shift? Yeah. Uh, and, of course, Night Shift, the the book that, uh, the one book I took with me to Boy Scout Jamboree, and then the entire Jamboree was rained out and a hurricane came through. Oh, my. And when a scout was shot, it was, uh, was not shot, he was struck by lightning. Oh. And the fucking uh, Beach Boys played twice because they couldn't leave the area. <laughs> because of the hurricane. Well, that's, that's, that's way worse than being struck by lightning. Let me tell you something. The second time they start, they played the exact same set. I'm like, what am I fucking doing? I never want to do anything Boy Scout related again in my life. I had already achieved the rank of Eagle Scout to stop doing this shit. And I was being forced continually to do Boy Scout shit. I did not want to do, Gina. <laughs> But at least I got to sit in my abandoned tent and read Night Shift over and over and over again, which I did happily. Yeah, uh, like 
you were saying that you weren't sure what the what the best one yeah. in cats cats. I mean, to me, it's Quitters Incorporated. Mm-hmm. But the the problem, the two glaring problems with Quitters Incorporated mm-hmm. is number one, uh, Drew Barrymore. You know, now, admittedly, it's a very small part. She's in. Yeah. She's she's appears in some way in, in each of the segments, but yes. uh, the the last one is the one where, where she's more or less the main character. Well, really, mm-hmm. the cast's the main character, but she's right. kind of but she's it's kind a of two hander. Yeah, but she. Uh, how do I put this gently? Her character in Quitters Incorporated uh, is supposed to be mentally challenged yeah. and. And uh, it, it's it's difficult from a, a modern and obviously Drew Barrymore being the kind of you know person she is, I'm sure she regrets playing this part. Right. Um, she was just yeah. a, a but also kid she was like a, she was also a, a like yeah she was also like ten at the time. Yeah, yes, yeah. So I, I don't I don't hold anything against her for taking this part. It's yeah. just you know as 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 every. Uh, a movie in which someone is playing a, a mentally impaired character it's it's uh it's difficult to watch but the other uh more glaring issue is that the uh the star of queers incorporated is one james woods mm, james and we and we run into the same problem that we ran into with seven is is yeah. you know how do we acknowledge that this is a pretty good performance you know and you know without ignoring the fact that you know he's basically turned into Satan. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's good at playing bug nuts crazy because bug nuts crazy is kind of part of who he is. Um, it would be the problem with talking about, you know, any of the films that he started in at the time that are potential uh, kill by kill, uh, you know, discussion points, whether that's John Carpenter's vampires or um, what's this Cronenberg movie? Videodrome. Videodrome. You know, again, I'm not discounting the performances. You know, assholes can give great performances. Uh, but we have to kind of acknowledge the asshole. And I, it just seems exhausting to a certain degree. So if we don't have to here, that's fine. Also, not very horror-ish. I think these are all horror, horror t- tangential. These are the most thriller-ish Stephen King stories, given this amount of play at the time. Yeah, it's funny that I was reading, uh, I, you did a, a skim of the Wikipedia page and I was looking mm-hmm. at, um, at uh, the reviews it received at the time and it got surprisingly good reviews, which, which, you know, I, I mean, I don't think it's a bad movie, but I, no. I think, I think that as far as horror goes, it's very, very low ball. Yeah. Um, so I was surprised that a lot of people say, oh, this is one of the best Stephen King adaptations. And I'm like, really? Mm. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it they it's it is it's solid, right? You've got a good director here. Um, he's coming off of Cujo. So he he knows what to do when it comes to King. I think Cujo is a tough one to adapt in a lot of ways because do you go with the bummer ending? How much of the supernatural do you put into it? Uh, the King verse is not really acknowledged in that film, but Cujo, the book has a lot of King verse shit going on. So, you know, I, I think there's, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, and I met the cast of Cujo at some sort of Burbank related Blu-ray release of, of the movie. And <laughs> they were all there and lovely people. Um, but Teague is, um, Teague's a journeyman, right? He can do a lot of things pretty well. And here he gets to show off some of all the other kind of chops that he's done. His war movie chops, his effects movie chops, you know, his creature movie chops, his thriller chops, his, you know, watching someone go crazy in a room chops. He gets to kind of do it all here. So from that standpoint, I do think it gives you a breadth of experience. Whereas Creepshow, which I would say is the best anthology film of King's, that he's involved in um, evokes a very distinct attitude throughout the entire thing. Whereas here, these are more disparate stories and a cat somehow connecting them is, is it's um, loose. Oh yeah. 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 The the cat kind of showing up in each story. That's like, 
I'm not even sure like, like why they felt this was necessary. I, because they couldn't get the rights to the creep show name. Again, watching this, I was somewhat struck that this feels more like creep show in certain ways, just because it's more it's professionally directed than creep show too. Like well, creep yeah, show oh, sure. has but that, that's, moments. That's a low bar though. Yeah. Yes. It is a, an exceedingly low bar, which this, you know, prances over. Um, but like I, the things about the ledge that I love that probably don't make it a great podcast are the tension, and the fact that you have, you know, someone who feels like it. It feels like um, the um, the third segment of Creep Show, where he's playing with the same themes but a different fear. In that one, it's I'm I'm afraid of drowning and not being able to do anything about it. And there it's, I have a fear of heights and I'm forced against my will to tr- just try to survive getting around the ledge of a, of a casino against a guy who definitely does not want to see me win that bet. Um, and so I guess the other King connection that I wanted to bring up because every author who, you know, works for a long time, whose work is really examined and discussed, you begin to see, certain themes or ideas play themselves out a couple different times. Cat's Eye and Sleepwalkers and Dr. Sleep all feature the idea that there are soul vapors inside of a person that can be stolen. (laughs) You're right, yeah. And cats are protectors or gateways to the other side. Well, I mean, King has spoken about that he he, you know, very much loves cats. And mm-hmm. and I mean there is some I mean, he didn't make he didn't make all this up entirely. Uh you no. know, there there is some folklore to to you know cats being spiritual protectors. And and I actually had heard the notion of uh cats stealing your breath while you sleep. Mm-hmm. When I when I was a kid, I don't remember where I heard it from, but but I I I had heard that from somewhere. So some but, Romani woman on the corner of the Jersey Shore. Just oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. then and then she put a curse on me to make me thinner. So um, how's it going, by the way? But that's a good point that you made. That like he's now written a you know, three at least three at least stories that involve like malevolent beings stealing you know basically essentially stealing someone's life force from yes. the, from them yeah. that's, that, that's a good point i hadn't i hadn't considered that but you're absolutely right i i just it's kind of it kind of blew me away i'm like all right this reminds me a lot of the sort of miasma that surrounds sleepwalkers and then i'm like but dr sleep has a cat that also tells him when someone's about to die and then he goes and guides them to death and also a group of vampires who steal the soul essence out of people out of people who have the shine it's like uh, i i think he's playing with the same chess pieces and but playing a different game with them every single time um because he's i I he's trying to get to the perfect story that uses those elements but I do wonder what it is inside of King's head where he's like, okay, cats and soul vapors. These <laughs> two things are like peanut butter and jelly in my mind. I mean, they, they kind of, I kind of like it though. You know, I, 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 I kind of like the idea that, you know, that because cats have such a reputation mm-hmm. for being aloof and, and supposedly, you know, not really giving a shit about their 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 owners one way or the other, whereas whereas dogs are very you know very open about their their affection for their humans. Right. You know the, the whole thing about you know if you die, your cat's probably going to eat you. <laughs> like that, you know? but, well, it's you know, not getting fed any other way. Yeah, so I'm fine with sake. that. You know, I mean, yeah. it'll save my family some some you know <laughs> money on funeral costs, but. But yeah, I mean, cats have always been surrounded with a sort of, you know, whether, you know, depending on your viewpoint, positive or negative mysticism. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that he finds that fascinating. Yeah, it's interesting. 
Um, so uh, this segment um, officially takes place in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is actually where the mass, the vast majority of the film was made. They kind of do some establishing shots in New York City and in Vegas. Um, oh, that's supposed to be they, that's supposed to be Atlantic City. Yeah. Oh, is it Atlantic? City? I was very oh, I was God. very excited about that when I when I when I I mean I don't think I don't know if it actually was filmed in any way in Atlantic City, but there was like an establishing shot at a title uh, parts in Atlantic City. And boy, do I uh, tell you, I did a when I did a, a Leo point when I first <laughs> saw this movie because man, I I as weird as a city as it is, there are so few movies that take place in Atlantic City. Sure. And even even now, I'm like, what? Hey. Does, is Snake Eyes also in Atlantic City? Yes, it is. That okay. actually was that actually was filmed at least in part in Atlantic City okay. at, at, at Convention Hall. Man, I have not seen Snake Eyes in a, a real minute. Uh, I, maybe that's due for a revisit. Sure. Um, so, uh, at this point, our our main cat, our main cat character, has traveled from Atlantic City down to Wilmington, North Carolina, and hops out of the back of a truck. But he's not the only one making a visit to town. Um, we have a troll who's on the loose. And we get uh, uh, some uh, Raimi vision as he trucks along the ground through the bushes and uh, finds the home of Amanda, Amanda's mom, and Amanda's dad, who are not really named. Technically, Amanda is not named. She's listed in the credits as Our Girl. Um, but, uh, this version, uh, is actually Amanda and, uh, luckily for us, um, uh, Candy Clark plays, uh, Amanda's mom and Candy Clark's hair looks like a tri-corner hat has been given a curly haircut. It's <laughs> unmoving, flat, vertical, but not very full. I, I mean, it's doing a lot of 80s things that I can't quite understand. I was going to say, it, it, it might be the, the the ultimate 80s mom hairstyle. Yes. Because it, it's short enough that she really doesn't have to worry about it, but long enough to make sure that uh, after you've swept up a dead bird, your dad still, you know, her, your husband still wants to get it on later that night. <laughs> <laughs> and she's reading Pet Cemetery. That doesn't really get your juices flowing. I'm going to no, tell you right now. No. Pet Cemetery is not a um, I'm feeling frisky tonight, honey, it, sort of book. Certainly not after you have a child. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and so uh, she emerges to say, oh, I've made lunch for you, child and husband. And they're in the middle of washing a car. Who waits to go, hey. It's time to eat in the middle of washing a car. Fucking wait until they rinse that soap off. That's not cool. <laughs> you don't you don't let your car go halfway through the car wash and you're like, well, keep it here out in the sun for a little while. I'm going to go to Taco Bell. That's not how uh, that operates. That's not good for your paint job. I'm telling no, you right now. No. This is my one dad piece of advice I'm going to give in this particular podcast. <laughs> Um, but uh, immediately, uh, Amanda notices uh, the cat and declares that she must be able to, you know, have this cat and keep the cat around. And Candy Clark's like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And the dad's kind of like, I don't know, man, she's into the cat. What are you going to fucking do? And she's like, back me up here. And he doesn't really want to. It's an interesting dynamic because... Um, usually it's the dad who doesn't believe and the mom who does, and this reverses it. She is like adamant that they, they cannot have this cat in, 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 in their house. And this house is fucking enormous. Like there's yes. like, there's like a, like a, a shot later in the, in the, uh, segment when a after general, the cat has escaped from the cat shelter and is, you know, heading back to, cause of course he remembers where the kid lives. <laughs> um, yeah, right. And like he is outside the house, it looks like fucking Buckingham Palace. It, it is, it is, it is huge. It's got a corner. The house is like, like yeah. L shaped. No, it's it, it's a, quite a colonial uh, sort of deal here. Uh, full you, brick, two you, stories. You have plenty. You have plenty of room for a single cat to roam around. Truly, 
even if you want to keep it outside, like um, you're fine. But she's acting like, listen, I can't keep up with this bird who's confined to a cage and all these dolls who've been left around on the ground for me to walk over. That I get. Like maybe clear out her room and whatnot, but uh, you got room for a cat. Uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. Um, But I guess it's kind of communicated through how the Dan talks about it, that maybe Candy Clark has personal feelings about pets in general, you know, from the whole, you know, the cat will steal your breath sort of thing that maybe that's ingrained in her. I mean, maybe, but at the same time, it's like, you know, certain things just kind of got to move past. Yeah. Uh, But Candy Clark's, you know, believes that if the cat named general stays around that it might attack polly the bird which is you know reasonable enough perhaps i mean, um, I mean you watch enough you know so much of the cat cartoons you you start thinking that is the reality of having a bird and, and a cat share the same space yeah, yeah. Uh, you know every pet is different just like every human is you never really know what they're going to do like nigel loved squirrels uh, and our new dog um, doesn't know what to do with them. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, listen, you have your business and I have mine. When you, you when live you, in the tree. Great. When, when you say Nigel loves squirrels, do you mean he loved playing with them or he loved like decapitating them? He, no, he wanted to be their friend. Oh, he okay. believed that everything wanted to be his friend. Oh. Whereas, um, and, and to the point where it's like, you're, I'm so friendly, I do want to lick you. And no no squirrel wanted to deal with well, that. Well, no. Uh, no cat wanted to deal with that. And Nigel believed that every cat wanted to be his friend too. Whereas Oswald doesn't, really doesn't understand the concept of squirrels and cats. Like, <laughs> like wait a second. They're just allowed to roam around without a leash? I don't get this. You have me on this all the time when we go outside. You're telling me they just have free fucking rain and I'm supposed to take that. Like, yeah, he has his doubts. He communicates it a lot. He's a very vocal dog. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel was stone silent. This one is like, you know, like, what are you talking about? What? I, I feel like a, a student in a Charlie Brown classroom. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> got to get like one of those uh, things like an up where you get the little collar that like that tells you what he's saying. I mean, he's communicating pretty well. You just don't get the details. But boy, does he love to tell you what's up. But if I am going to try to stay in a house, right? And I'm like, listen, I'm not going to kill that bird. Probably the thing you shouldn't do is immediately go outside and kill an outside bird. No. <laughs> That's not helping your case at all. So... That night, General is put outside, and Amanda is told that she sucks at brushing her teeth. And we see why she sucks at brushing her teeth. It's really nothing to do with her technique. It's that she chews gum after she's brushed her teeth, Gina. Yeah, no, 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 no. No. If my kid is chewing gum before bed, gum is gone. I will erase gum's existence from this house. (laughs) That is... Not a good idea. No. Uh, luckily, I don't have a kid with a gum problem or any other sort of <laughs> obsessive chewing problem. Thank goodness. Uh, and uh, Amanda confesses to her father that she's been having a recurring nightmare, in which a monster comes out of the wall and attacks her. Uh, and it hasn't gotten her yet, but it has gotten close. And he kind of takes this information on and like, oh, that's why you want this cat. That's what you want this cat. It's kind of a protector. Okay. I, I see where it's going now. He's kind of like getting in on her line of sight of what a rationale is. Which is good because, you know, I mean, there's really, you know, I mean, yeah, the, the being you know, afraid the cat's going to attack the bird is it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a reasonable, you know, it's reasonable concern. But, you know, the, you can just see, like, the the absolutely fucking not in Candy Clark's eyes. <laughs> and, and, it's just, and it's just like, come on, man. It's, it's a cat, you know? It's, it's not like she's trying to adopt a St. Bernard or something, you know? Yes. I mean? 
And the Saint Bernard has already made the entrance. That's the opening. Yes. <laughs> the opening oh yeah, this, this movie is chock full of you know, wink. Remember this? How about this? Remember this? Re- references yeah. to other Stephen King properties. It really wants to point out that it's Stephen King related, and it's it's not afraid to poke at you, poke at you, poke at you with the references. Now, let's say you're a troll, and you love stealing breath, and there's a bird in the room, and you've heard through the grapevine. That the parents are afraid that this can is going to eat this bird, and so you're is the is the troll trying to frame Joe, <laughs> or is that just a happy accident? Uh, I mean, how how smart both the troll and general are kind of varies uh, uh, throughout through, throughout the segment. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the general also knows how to operate a record player, so. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a Fisher Prize. I mean, it's pretty easy. <laughs> it's not, he's not selecting the records or anything, taking them off the wall. Like, this isn't the way you keep vinyl from bending. This, you take, if you want, to, you want to protect the sleeve, you don't leave the original plastic on. You have to buy this plastic sleeve. He's not that much of a record collector, so I'll give him that. <laughs> he immediately goes in and kills this fucking bird. And, of course, General is hearing this outside. He's like, not on my watch. And he comes through the window, and he gets stabbed for his efforts. And the troll manages to go back into its hidey hole. Yeah, he's got, like, he, a little, he's got like the little, like, Jer- Jerry Mouse, uh, like, 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 hole in the wall, like, in the baseboard. Yeah. But he can repair it through its mind? Is that troll magic? Is that how... Trolls work? Yeah, because- I guess yeah, I guess it is some sort of magic, which you know makes you wonder why he just, you know, can't to steal Amanda's breath from across the room while he just right. has to, he has to be like right up in her face. Yeah, why why does he have to climb Mount Bed every fucking night to get to this? Like it's he has to put in some work to actually get near her mouth and make any of this operate, but yeah, he, he can just repair holes in walls? Is if that's true, if there are trolls listening, I have a couple projects around the house I would love your help with. <laughs> He'll give you his email address after the after the show. You get in touch. Well, <laughs> yeah. If you are a troll who can repair holes in walls, please email me at killbykillpod at gmail.com. And let's work out your rates. Are you bonded? L- let me know. Um, the troll here... <laughs> Was created by Carlo Rambaldi. He's, um, he's kind of cute. He's really adorable. Yeah. He's got quite a snout. He's a um, little. He's a little. He's, he's like a. He's like a chubby little guy. Like I said, he like I said yeah. earlier, he's dressed like a jester. He's dressed like a jester. He looks like a meatball with teeth. <laughs> His face doesn't move so much. No, I think that's the the thing Rambaldi has a tough time with. I mean, I think Rambaldi is a better craftsman than an artist because obviously the alien and et are iconic but also very limited in how mechanical they are and i just remind the audience he once promised dino de laurentis that he could deliver a 50 foot tall mechanical ape that would actually walk around and, and he, he, all, he managed, all he managed was a hand. <laughs> he managed a hand, and then they wheeled out the suit on a big wheelbarrow sort of, sort of thing, like he was a refrigerator at Shea <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Please go back to our King Kong episode if you don't know what we're talking oh, about. Oh, I love really that one hand. so much. It's, it's a good one. It's so good. Uh, we've had some good suggestions from people. Um and so uh, this troll, you know, uh, you can tell because like my dog now, Oswald, uh, this troll loves to vocalize. He's just yeah, he's just like, of- like, like Amanda must like, like someone, someone's like slipping some sleep meds into her, into her, her bedtime milk or something. Cause she's just zonked while this thing's just like running into shit and like, yeah. you know, falling into like, cause she has like a snare drum next to her bed <laughs> for some reason. Why do you, like, why like do you like, need a like drum she's, set? Like she's like Ringo Starr on, on, on vacation or something. <laughs> like, you know, this thing like falls into it. She barely stirs. 
falls into it. Yeah, it's like just trips like, it's over like, the dolls. It's like grunting and muttering to itself while while like <laughs> it, like trying to climb up onto her bed and all. Yeah, and then once he gets up there and like, oh, sweet, sweet child mouth. He starts like, <laughs> I'm like, is this troll getting off? Like, like, I don't make that kind of noise for meals that I can't wait to eat. You're telling me, like, this child breath is so good that you're kind of like, I'll be in my bunk because that's how it sounds. I mean, again, like, remember how it's portrayed in Sleepwalkers and, and Dr. Sleep? I mean, it was mm-hmm. like like an orgasmic rush to, to, be able, to be able to, you know, get this person's life force into you. Maybe I enjoy watching Rose the Hat get off on... <laughs> I mean, a lot more than I do this little, you know, rotten potato. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he's, he's, you know, they both have hats. Sure. But but that's, but that's where the resemblances begin and end. And and as far as we're aware, this troll is not also having sex with its mom. Um, No. Even if they are, in fact, mom and son. I just, I like we talked about in that episode, I think they've been together so long. That's the ruse. They've fallen into it. But I don't know if it's actually incestuous. These are the things I would ask Stephen King. Um, because I uh, only want to know the dumbest things from this man. I don't think that's a dumb question. I think it's a perfectly reasonable question. Am I allowed to think this is sexy? <laughs> Am I? Listen, how much is Rose the Hat getting off more than the troll and cat size? These are the things I need to know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, they come in, they discover, you know, the the bird is dead. The cat has been stabbed with an implement. And, of course, there's no troll to be seen. So they automatically blame this cat. Yeah, because Candy, Candy's just like, she's about ready to like, you know, back over this thing with her car. There was like murder in her eyes for, yes, this, no. for this poor fucking cat. <laughs> well, I, you know how people, how parents get really mad with like, I told you this would happen. I told you this would happen and it fucking happens. And you kind of like, you're not happy that you were right. You're mad that you were right. Well, yeah. no one would listen to you. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, wildly, she's not right. She's got a troll in her house. <laughs> a common problem we all deal with. Uh, so uh, that morning at breakfast, she decides to take matters into her own hand. She, you know, takes some tuna, puts it in a dish, puts it inside a cardboard box. And before you can say Wiley, Coyote, and Acme, she's got that cat trapped and she wheels off to the local animal shelter which appears to be in a nuclear wasteland. <laughs> it is, it, that place does not look cool. Well, you know, it doesn't matter because this is one of those all kill shelters. Right. Yeah. They're, they can't stop killing. Once General is in there, he's not in there for 24 fucking hours. And they're like, you're dead tomorrow, pal. I like, you have plenty of other cats to go through. Why is this cat? singled out so quickly that we gotta we gotta I, kill I feel, and burn this I, I bad boy i feel like boy. candy clock slipped him a few bucks to like <laughs> like put him, put him to the top of this i'm tired of this cat's bullshit that he's been in my house one day i've had uh-huh. enough he's gotta go he's how gonna, expensive he, is that bribe is that a five dollars in the palm of my hand <laughs> or is that a i'll write a check to your fundraiser for fifty dollars like, yeah i think, I, think that's that? a, I think that's a fundraiser okay all right yeah they don't they don't tell you that you know if you slip a couple extra bucks they 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 they, they kill it they kill the pet you dropped off faster <laughs> or does she promise the guy who's running that shelter that he can see what's doing underneath that blue potato sack she's wearing <laughs> that is a the opposite of a form-fitting dress it is it doesn't fit any particular form. You could fit it around a Grecian column. Yeah, she's, they're, they're really trying hard. And it's not like Kenny Clark is any kind of bombshell, but I mean, she's, no. she's, she's, she's fine. She's attractive, but they really are going out of their way to make her look as frumpy as possible. Yeah, for reasons like, but also, why put her in such a semi glamorous outfit? Like, there's foil on the front part of it. Like, it's both. <laughs> loud and it just sexless on top of it. It just, again, she doesn't have to be sexy, but it, it's a weird personality. They're giving this particular character where she's super dressed up in clothes that don't work for her. 
Right. It seems to be a costuming problem primarily. It has nothing to do with her or who she is or what she is. It's it's that they're like, what do moms do? And Dino De Laurentiis is smoking in the corner. They wear the finest sexy dresses, but they're not the too sexy. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dino. That's not the way American women dress. All the women are the same. They all dress the same. They all try to tease you and get the millions of dollars for their movies. And I say, oh, no, well, they, maybe, well, we'll see. They, 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 maybe will do it. They sweet talk the animal control guy. <laughs> I don't know why I sound, I don't know why I sound like I don't know why I sound like Nandor from uh, what we do in the shadows. <laughs> they always saying, "Hey, can you kill my cat first? And I'm like, "I don't know. <laughs> Got a lot of cat to kill." And I'm like, mm, maybe this five dollar bill will change your mind. And I'm like, "Yes, it does." <laughs> and then he smoked fifteen cigarettes. <laughs> I don't feel bad about making fun of Dino De Laurentiis. He was not the best of people. He was not the worst of people, but he was not the best. And anyway, he's dead. Who cares? Yeah, he who, who fucking cares? Listen, his daughter ended up producing Hannibal, one of the best things that ever happened on television. So you know what happened? She made she she produced up. She made the world a better place. That's exactly. What we have to say about it. So back to uh, the house. Um, the troll is still living there. And I will say one of the things this segment does better, as bad as it is in costume design and production design, the big versions of the bedroom so the guy in the costume can walk around like he's really that size are pretty good. Pretty good, With the exception yeah. of that drum. Yeah. Uh, but it makes it kind of come alive. There's a charm to it that comes from having real sets and real places. And that's the most charming element of this. Um, luckily for all of us, uh, while that troll is lazily trying to get to the child whose breath he wants to steal. And this time he will not be disturbed. He puts, a uh, a, a door stopper underneath the door. Again, why does she have a door stopper that he can use? <laughs> I mean, maybe to hold it open normally. I, mean, I know in, in all seriousness, mm. like in my, in my apartment, all the doors have, have a stopper to keep it cute from like. Probably to keep it from the kid from being blown blown shut by the wind. No, oh, okay, sure, sure. Um, yeah, I can't. Well, that that giant house might have wind blowing through. It's I mean, so Jesus. Cavernous. Yeah, I mean, she's got a fireplace in her bedroom. <laughs> That's true. She's like the she's like the she's like Christy McNichol in that in that the <laughs> Bionic <laughs> Woman episode. Bionic Woman episode. We gotta start keeping count of kids with fireplaces because that's just not something that children should have no. access to. Unless you're in a in a in a wood in like a fucking cabin, this is not something that children need access to. Well, I'm not buying this house because Jenny won't have her own fireplace. Then come on, give me a fucking break. Anyways, uh, he's rumbling and jumbling around with fucking bells on his head. No one's waking up, and General makes a great escape from the animal shelter. Uh, and quickly gets across town faster than even Candy Clark did in her giant station wagon. He's just, he really knows the route. Um, he must have Googled it ahead of time. <laughs> and I'm honestly surprised that General didn't like set every pet loose, but I guess like time was not on his side. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, he was taking a, you know, the, uh, that's why YP, not an MP approach to the other, the other animals. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I think this troll kind of sucks at his job. Like, he's savoring it too much. He's just I think, he just spends, like, so much time just bullshitting around. Right. Like, fucking around, falling into drums, you know, <laughs> molesting dolls, you know, crawling And that's what, over and that's what makes it, less, to me, that's what makes it less scary. Right. Because he does seem like kind of a buffoon. Yeah. Like, if General didn't, like, the, how is he succeeding before this? Is this his first breath steal? Because he feels it feels like a lot of rookie moves from this fucker. Yeah, and again, this surely cannot be the first time he's been in a house where there's been like an animal present. Right, it's very odd to me. So, um, the uh, general makes his way back, climbs up the tree, gets into the house because they they're Amanda's making sure that that window stays open regardless of what kind of 
rainstorm is outside. And the troll and general have a f- fist to paw fight that extends for about five minutes in which they knock things over. Uh, he, there's a lot of swiping crayons are tossed like they are spears. Uh, and all of this wakes up Candy Clark and husband and they're running down the hallway to where her bedroom door is. And Candy Clark pushes him out of the way and says, get out of my way. You're going to the same fucking place. Oh, she's what are you a, doing? She's like completely losing it. <laughs> like, like, uh, you know, when she appeared in in that Amityville 3D movie and and she becomes a skeleton and hugs somebody, <laughs> is it because she she needs physical contact and love? Is that it? Like, is that inherent to her she, as a person? She, she is good at hysterical. She is great at hysterical. Um, and I guess, you know, like people do irrational shit when, when their child's in danger. So I, I can't begrudge her too much, but <laughs> like, also he is trying to help madam. Please allow him to try to put his shoulder against this. Uh, who knows how thick that fucking door is considering how giant the house. I was going to say, I certainly they live in a mansion. Yeah. Yeah. With three people. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, why isn't her mother moved in there? Like, they could have several other people, an au pair, you know, someone, you know, visiting from Europe and going to school, something, a sister, a brother. Anyways, there's an extended cat on troll fight, which all ends when the troll gets on top of a record player <laughs> and the cat speeds up the record. Which is because, uh, which is apparently the police's synchronicity, too. <laughs> right. Apparently. Which cracks me up. <laughs> Even in 85, I feel like an every breath you take gag feels a little hacked. That, that right? you know, a 10-year-old is listening to synchronicity, too. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, I was a 10-year-old listening to the police. I was that person. Yeah, but did you have the album or were you like, were you like just like listening like on MTV? I, you know, I had, I had uh, every album from the second album. Oh, ah, okay. Um, I was into the police <laughs> I, mean, I don't know why uh, other than the fact that they were a kick-ass band i mean you don't think they, they were good singles there's no yeah. shame i just you know yeah. it just seems odd for a 10 year old to own own a copy of the police <laughs> yes i i do imagine imagine what that listening session is like when it's not every breath you take which was a huge pop hit but there's like crazy fucking you know cuts on that album <laughs> like She's really listening to synchronicity with headphones on. Like, yeah, you're right. This world is going to hell. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. Uh, but the record spins so fast that it sends the troll who weighs two to five pounds. We don't really know what his mass index is. Uh, he can fall through a drum, but also can ha- be lifted up by a balloon. There's a lot of, does it have hollow bones? We'll never know. He's just like flying into a fan. Flungs, gets flungified into a fan and shredded by a plastic box fan. And he's just like, so, it's like this little pile of hamburger with just like an arm. <laughs> like, it's an <laughs> arm and a knife and gore. This teeny tiny little arm. It's so cute. He's... He gets one arm just lopped off clean, and the rest of it is just like you went through the mangler. <laughs> I think my favorite part about this this whole thing is how it ends, where I feel like they didn't actually have an ending because the right. the, the the parents are just like, okay, well, we're not going to tell anybody. Good night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dad's just like, do you, have you seen any more? I don't think so. Okay, well, that's All right. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> we were only invaded by one troll creature who tried to kill my child. I'll guess like, maybe I'll talk to an exterminator about it, but I won't tell him what we're hunting. You, you know, know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like look in the basement or anything like that. We're just gonna pretend this never happened. Well, now they've got a troll killing cat on the premises, so maybe that helps them. Sleep well, even, and even then, like Candy Clark's like, no, I don't think I wanted to sleep in the house. <laughs> You know what I'm gonna? It's gonna be a hard pass for me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I 
realize that thing would have killed you down for the cab. You know, I really don't like cats. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much it. There's only one death. So we would just be deciding if we, how we want to be thrown into a box fan and chewed up. It's the same fucking death. So who cares? Um, would you wear a hat with bells on it, Gina? Of course I would. Come on. <laughs> don't you know me? You're going to ask that question. This is true. After seven years, I, 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 it was slightly leading, but sometimes I, I have to do it because not. This might be someone's first episode of the show. You never know. That's true. Yes, I. Every would. episode is someone's first, so they don't know that you would wear a hat with bells on. And of course, I would not. I would wear underwear with bells. On. <laughs> Either way, they are hearing you approaching. Yeah, my head approaching is not the dangerous part. I think we can all admit that. So. <laughs> Um, before we go, why don't you tell people where they can find you on these here internets? I write about movies and television at the spool.net. Uh, I have a sub stack. It's Gina watches things. So com. I am no longer on Twitter. <laughs> Instead, if you uh, have one of those fancy schmancy blue sky invites, you can find me there also under Gina does things. And I am also on Instagram under Gina does things. Do it today, people. Check it out. You can find us pretty much everywhere under Kill by Kill or Kill by Kill Pod. Um, we're not very active on Twitter anymore, although that is, I'm not going to really cut it off only because people can reach out to us that way. Uh, and I don't want to cut you out, you, the Kill by Kill listener, out of accessing that. Uh, but you can always join if you happen to have a Facebook account, and many younger people don't, but the olds in the crowd. Uh, can join the Facebook group, which is pretty fun. We we have a chat going there as well. Uh, we're on Instagram. We're also on Threads. We're also on Blue Sky. We're on Spotify, uh, Tribal, Post.News. We've tried them all, right? Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it all shakes out. But, um, you know, am I thrilled that the guy who started Blue Sky, uh, he's he's not right wing. He who would like to propose that RFK Jr. fucking becomes president. So he's a different kind of fucking weirdo. But how, do you how do you believe in human growth hormone, but not vaccines, Gina? I mean, your vaccines don't don't give you engorged nipples. <laughs> That's right. They don't make you swole. Yeah. I, I don't care what he does on Max Day. I'm sure it's fucking fascinating, but it does not qualify you to be president. Also... You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, I mean. There, there are plenty of smart people and truly dumb people who lift a lot of weights. It does not qualify you to be president. Uh, so I would like him to go away uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, but that just about does it. Um, join us on Patreon, of course, uh, where we have lots of fun stuff happening, uh, including um, uh, we released the Warlock episode uh, because of the passing of Julian Sands. And in order to replace that, um, I, our Patreon listener request was to do another Julian Sands movie. So we're talking Warlock to the Armageddon, uh, which is super fun. So I would point you in that direction as well. And of course, uh, don't worry, folks. The body count will continue for myself and for Gina. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Because I was. Jesus Christ! Echo, I, I shut up. Stop. Stop telling me this. I don't want to hear it. I don't know. That thing has not been connected to the internet, so I don't know what's going on. Uh oh! You you, you invoked you invoked the gypsy curse. I, did. I sure did. <laughs> Instead of saying thinner like a Lamonty woman, because like, Echo. Amazon listens to you. <laughs> you cannot turn it off.